Hello, Facebook Live. Marcus here. It's happening, everybody. It is Wednesday afternoon, about one o'clock. I'm in my office today. Uh, that's the bookshelf behind me. Um, so I am uh, doing work in here today, uh, getting ready. We are getting ready for Thanksgiving. I cannot believe Thanksgiving is already upon us. Um, crazy how Thanksgiving is like next week. Um, Justin comes home from college this next week. Uh, very excited about that. He'll be home in like a week. Um, so, uh, yeah. So it is uh, Wednesday afternoon. It's Wednesday the 19th, I think. 19th. November 19th. And I'm in my office. Um, I've got the dogs with me here. Um, Barolo's with me sitting on my lap here. You can see him a little bit. Um, he's excited. Uh, they just got here from my daughter's house. Um, let's see. So... Uh, I want to talk about a substitute for wa uh, farmed salmon. So, a lot of um, everyone, everyone knows a lot of the controversy on farmed salmon, how bad farmed salmon is, um, and why you know just there's a lot of controversy. A lot of people know a lot of people avoid farmed salmon. I was taught as a chef that you know if I wanted to serve a, a, instead of serving farmed salmon, there was another substitute called Arctic char. Uh, and somebody just asked me about this other day, Arctic char, because uh, we had Arctic char on our menu a while back. Um, so I'm just going to go over what Arctic char is and if it is indeed a good substitute or not. Uh, if everybody's tuning in, can drop a comment, hashtag live or hashtag where you're tuning, or where you're tuning in from. That'd be great. Um, hi, Anne. Uh, hi, Matthew. Hi, Susan. Lynette. And everybody else, Susan. And hi, Cheryl. So just drop a comment where you're tuning in from or if it's live, hashtag live. I'm going to be talking about a substitute for wild salmon, uh, for farm salmon. And is indeed uh, this a good substitute? So first of all, the single there shouldn't be a substitute for farm salmon because you shouldn't eat farm salmon to begin with, because farm salmon is a very toxic. Um, just the way the, everything about farm salmon is just not good. All right, there is a way to do it in the containment system. I'm going to talk about that, which makes farm salmon better, um, makes it makes makes it considerably better, um, but you're typically not finding that type of salmon. Uh, very, very, we were actually at a restaurant a couple weeks ago and we actually found it. This was up in upstate New York. And I, I didn't believe the, uh, you know, because I know about all this, I didn't believe the uh, the server. So I actually looked on, on myself on the website and I did a quick Google, Google search over there. And sure enough, um, they were buying from an inland containment system. So most farm salmon, like I would say, if I had to guess, 97% of farm salmon out there, maybe even more uh, farm salmon out there, comes from open pen net systems. Open pen net systems are basically when you throw nets into the ocean, um, they have holes in them, nets, throw the nets in and create a floating fish farm basically in the ocean. So they throw 50,000 fish in there, 100,000 fish, in there. they throw a ton of fish in there and uh, they'll start feeding the fish. Uh, the fish will start trying to live, trying to do their thing, but they're gonna be very, um, very over uh, overpopulated typically, and even the, the less dense, dense, dense population ones are um, still very, very densely populated. So what happens is the fish create a lot of disease. They create lice, um, they create feces, they create a very toxic environment that they're living in. What happens to that, to that water is it sits there and goes into the bay. The feces drops to the bottom. The fish get very sick. The sea lice go out and then attach onto other wild, wild salmon or other species as, a, as well as the fish that are actually being farmed. So everything just spews out. So when you have a containment system, anything that's farmed in a containment system means the water goes through a filtration process and the water's not dumped into the wild. The water is recirculating, recirculating, recirculating. So it actually gets processed the water, cleaned, and then reused again. There's no opportunity for sea lice and disease and all that kind of stuff to spread out into the wild because you're talking about a pond inside of a building or a raceway. Raceways are these, um, these like, I guess, lined up farms that are inland that then the water's cleaned, filtered, processed, and put back into this, this raceway. So raceways and then um, uh, inland, uh, inland containment systems. So these are not out in the ocean. So that's the biggest problem with farm salmon is 98%. I mean, I've very, very, this is one of the very, very first times I've seen an actually a restaurant have an inland farmed containment salmon on the menu. I've never even really seen that. I know they're out there. I know they exist. Um, I had it many, many years ago when I was a chef at the, at the country club in Westchester. I was buying this fish from um, Idaho that was inland containment farmed salmon, coho salmon. 
So I didn't believe it at first, and the restaurant was indeed right. Turns out this farm is in upstate New York, way upstate New York, so I'm going to check them out and see what else they're doing. There is a farm here in the Hudson Valley, or two farms here in the Hudson Valley, that are doing steelhead trout the same exact way. And then the fish, the shrimp farm in Newburgh, um, I haven't seen them that, that much on, on social media lately, but there is a shrimp farm in Newburgh that's doing the same exact thing. So these are much, much better systems. They cost seven times the price, uh, but they don't, they don't spew out into the wild. And their claim is they don't need to use any antibiotics in these containment systems because they can filter out anything that's bad and replace it with constantly fresh water. Um, and then, uh, so the water's uh, much higher quality. So, okay. So now, Arctic char. What is Arctic char? Well, Arctic char is a combination. Of, if you if you combined trout and salmon, you'd have basically what this Arctic char is. That's what it looks like. That's what it you know, tastes like. It, it's called color like salmon. Tastes a little like trout. The, the the oiliness content of trout. So um, it's very. They say it's very closely related to salmon itself. Arctic char. Now, Arctic char, unlike salmon, does not die after it spawns. So it can spawn and spawn and spawn again and live up to 25 years and get up to 25 pounds on the largest. Uh, king salmon easily get 25 pounds without, without a doubt, easily 25 pounds. So Arctic char is a sort of smaller fish can get up to 25 pounds. They do not die after they spawn. They'll spawn over and over again. They'll go back to the similar place that they, that they did just like salmon did. Um, and um, these fish were trapped in glacial ponds they show lakes um, many, many, many years ago. So you have just like some, some inland salmon um, in lakes. You have inland um, Ar Arctic char. Uh, a lot of it is in England, in the UK. Um, a lot of, in the UK, uh, there's some, a lot in Canada. There really is not many commercial fisheries for Arctic char. There is one in the northern part of Canada. Now this fish literally lives under the ice most of the year. It, it, it's, it likes cold water, it lives under ice. Um, it's a very short season when they do go to catch it. Uh, shorter than salmon, indeed. It lives in places where it's the, the, the water's covered with ice until the ice melts in July. Uh, so this is kind of how Arctic it is, how cold it is. So um, they start to do their thing, migrate, spawn, and swim upstream. And the seasons, I mean, the, the whole process starts happening in July, August, and is done by mid-September. So it's a very, very short season for Arctic char. Um, there's not much commercially done with Arctic char. Um, it is commercially caught, but um, it is sport caught a lot as well. But as far as restaurants being able to buy wild Arctic char, it's a tough thing to do. It's not that easy to buy. However, it is easy to buy farmed Arctic char. And farmed Arctic char is typically done in inland containment systems, um, raceways. Uh, it is a much more sustainable farming method than most the majority of salmon. So this is why some chefs and some people will say, well, Arctic char is a good substitute for farmed salmon. If you don't want to serve farmed salmon, you will serve Arctic char. It looks like salmon, it kind of acts like salmon, it's related to salmon, it's farmed in a much more sustainable manner. So that's why people are saying that if you ever hear that Arctic char is a good substitute for salmon. We have not been able to serve Arctic char for years. And I, you know, just because, somebody asked, actually asked me this the other night um, at our wine dinner. Somebody asked, remember that Arctic char? I said, yes, that's a great topic for me to, to talk about again on a Facebook Live. So I tried to call um, the one seafood company I knew that could get me Arctic char. They're actually a redistributor, which means they sell to all other distributors. So I called and spoke to the person this morning, my contact there, and I said, what's the story with, with, with real wild Arctic char? I said, I know it's gonna be frozen, What's the deal with it? Can you get it? And he goes, wow, Marcus, I don't even know if I can get it. And we're like, you know, we're up on that kind of stuff. So he goes, we got plenty of plenty of farmed Arctic char, wild, I don't really know. And he called me back, sent me an email back about 20 minutes later. He goes, nope, we don't have any source for for wild Arctic char right now, frozen, um, nothing. It's all, it's all farm raised. Um, so to get wild Arctic char is, is a chore in itself. If you see, ever see wild Arctic char, I would suggest buying it, trying it, experimenting with it. If I ever see it, uh, level for the restaurant is something that I'll pick up again. Um, but again, there is, this, there is a season, there is a commercial catch, just not much. And it's way, way north um, in Canada, way, way up there, uh, Arctic char is done. So that's why they will say Arctic char is a good substitute because it's farmed in a much, in a better manner. Um, I really haven't seen Arctic char in many restaurants lately. It was a big thing 
15, 20 years ago, and I remember even in the mid-90s working at places at the Greenbrier and Broadmoor, we always had Arctic char of some sort on our menu in one of the restaurants, uh, and that's how I first got introduced to Arctic char. So, uh, yeah, it is, it is a much better uh, uh, fish, the better, the, but again, the very, very best substitute for wild salmon, uh, for farm salmon is wild salmon. Uh, that is the best substitute, and in fact, there shouldn't even be a substitute for farm salmon because we should not be eating farm salmon to begin with, net containment farm salmon. We should not be eating open net farmed salmon at all. I don't care if it says it's organic. I don't care if it says it's sustainable. Those are all self-regulated terms that these farms do, and these farms have a great way of marketing their their very toxic farm salmon as this as this like major major um, um, health food and. And there's some farms that say, you know, every time you eat a wild sal a farm salmon, you're saving a wild salmon, which is total, totally not true. It's the opposite. The more we eat farm salmon, the more we kill off the wild salmon. All those uh, diseases and the lice and all those things that I talked about in the beginning of this video actually get spread out into the ocean and into the migratory path of the wild salmon and the wild salmon suffer from it. These are diseases and lice that are typically not in their area that they're not used to dealing with and then all of a sudden um, their population goes down. And this is, um, this is proven. Uh, the wild count, as, as, the, as the population grows in salmon farms, as more and more salmon farms come, come, have come on since the 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, the more salmon farms come on, the lower the population of Atlantic salmon. And you would think that the opposite is true. Well, for farming more salmon, then the wild salmon is getting a break. That's not true at all, because again, we are killing off the wild salmon by eating farm salmon. So I don't care how sustainable they say it is, if it's done in an open pen, net operation, which is the majority of the salmon out there, then um, it's not doing the environment good, it's not doing you good, it's not doing the wild salmon any good, it's actually a detriment and destruction. Um, I have not eaten farmed salmon um, since probably Gee, it's probably been 22 years since I've actually eaten farmed salmon, or at least knowingly eaten farmed salmon. Um, so I have been totally against it since day one here at the restaurant in 2003. I even put a press release out in 2004 how I vowed never to serve farmed salmon, uh, open pen net farmed salmon. Uh, there's just not, you know, it's, there's, and it's, it's not even that the industry can improve to make a massive difference. The issue is there's no right way to do the wrong thing is the problem. So yes, they have cleaned up their act. Yes, they have made investment, advancements in feed. Yes, they've done certain things, but overall, there's no right way to do the wrong thing when it comes to open pen, uh, open pen salmon farms. So that's the issue with that. So um, anything from Norway is gonna be open pen or majority open pen. Norway's trying to give a little tax incentives now for inland containment systems because so they realize that they totally screwed up um, the environment there uh, with these salmon farms. So, but if you hear the word Norwegian salmon, Atlantic salmon, Scottish salmon, Faroe Island salmon, um, these are all types of farmed salmon, farmed salmon across the board. Doesn't matter, there's stuff coming out of South America. Uh, Verlasso is from Chile. Um, there's another one out of, um, out of New Zealand or Australia, New Zealand. Um, so far, salmon doesn't exist in the Southern Hemisphere. Southern, salmon is only a Northern Hemisphere fish from California and up. All right, that's only in Northern Hemisphere fish. They've tried to put it into the Southern Hemisphere and populate some streams and some areas down in New Zealand, and it's been very, very unsuccessful. Uh, but they have put salmon farms in those areas. They can't destroy other wild salmon, but they, the, all those diseases and lice do get in, into the um, environment and go to the other fish. And um, if you've ever done a Google search or a good YouTube search, um, or even do a Google search, what it looks like underneath the bottom of a salmon pen in the in these bays it is horrific i mean feet and feet and feet of just salmon feces that is just down there and turned into what looked like this ash um like fireplace ash and it's all just dead feces down there dead environment everything has died it doesn't matter if they're rotating from one the, the farm because this is one thing they claim they claim well we're going to move the farm every so, so years to another area so that area can regenerate the damage has been done and the regeneration is almost impossible to do once you get to that kind of a point. Um, so again, salmon farm across the board, if it's going from an open pen, which is most salmon farms, um, it is uh, on the avoid list. It is just, it's just not good at all whatsoever. So yeah, if you get wild Arctic char, give it a try. Farmed Arctic char, give it a try. Uh, but again, there's no, there's no substitute uh, for the real deal for 
uh, wild, wild, uh, true wild salmon. If you want to stock your freezers up with wild salmon, we have plenty of wild salmon in stock, of course. Um, I would love to have gotten some wild lager char frozen, but we just could not pull that off. Uh, but salmon, we have plenty in stock, coho salmon fillets uh, that are truly line caught, uh, the real deal Alaskan line caught from a co-op up in Alaska. Uh, so that's in our freezer list, uh, on our grocery list, so is halibut, so is sablefish uh, from Alaska, and so is tuna from the Pacific Northwest, from Oregon and Washington State, albacore tuna, pole caught tuna, line caught tuna. And um, that's it for now, folks. I'm going to go out for my run here, and i got a busy afternoon, and it's our Wednesday, so we're kind of off. So Jamie and I are actually cooking some sablefish nights uh, for dinner, also known as butterfish or black cod. Uh, very, very good sustainable fish that is just melts in your mouth. When you cook it, it's, it's amazing, this fish. It's very hard to overcook. It's super easy to cook. We have those in stock, so Jamie and I are actually having that tonight with some um, organic baby spinach. And I think we're going to make some um, green curry coconut sauce with it uh, and make that. So just see what the dogs are up to. So the one is here. Um, right next to me. Um, and that's it, folks. Everybody have a great day. Thank you for tuning in. Again, drop a comment if you're watching live or where you're tuning in from. Uh, drop a comment if you like salmon, uh, if, you're, if, you, if you prefer to eat salmon, if you like salmon, if you avoid um, uh, farm salmon, just drop some comments on, on, uh, on salmon, and uh, that'd be great. Um, Susan's saying, cooked Asian style last night. Delicious. Excellent. 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 So, Black cod is super easy to cook. Basically, you just put your broiler on in your oven, or you can put it, or you can bake it, and you just pop it in. I like to broil it, and it just starts flaking. It's just simply, you can put a little bit of white wine in the bottom of the pan. Um, you can season it with a little salt. Um, and if you use butter, butter's great in there. If you use olive oil, a little, a little you need a milder olive oil uh, because it is so, um, so delicate, butterfish. Uh, so coconut milk, anything, any kind of sauce with coconut milk would work very, very well with it. Um, black cod or sablefish is smoked. It's sablefish when it's smoked. Um, it is, um, a lot of people know it, know it as that. A lot of people don't realize it, that you can actually cook, cook sablefish or black cod as a meal in itself because they're used to having it smoked. Um, but super easy to cook, hard, uh, hard to overcook, and always delicious uh, black cod or sablefish. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate the support from everybody, and everybody have an amazing day, and hope everybody's getting ready for a safe Thanksgiving with family members, and um, we, if you need anything like organic sweet potatoes or anything uh, to fill into your uh, Thanksgiving, we can help you out. Just check our grocery list, aromatimebistro.com. You can see all that kind of stuff there. We have a lot of cool gift ideas coming up. Um, so, for example, we're going to be doing truffle oil with aged balsamic. All these little foodie gift packs, um, Manhattan kits. Um, we're going to do all these really, really cool things. So, we're going to be doing pizza kits with our frozen pizza from Naples, uh, with a bottle of wine paired with it. Doing all those kinds of things. And I think we're going to go. I think we're going to go back to our 1999 four pack of IPAs. Um, that was a very good thing for us during the lockdown. And the reason why I say I think we're going to go back to that is because I think we're probably going to get locked down again. Um, that is my suspicion. A lot of people are thinking that, uh, that we are unfortunately going to go back into lockdown like we were before. A lot of the numbers are rising um, everywhere. I know in Washington State, a friend had to close his restaurant yesterday. because had to close several of his restaurants yesterday. He has four or five restaurants. Uh, had to close them all again because um, they're going into lockdown in Michigan. I heard is doing the same exact thing. So certain states are going back to where we were back in March and April. So if that's the case, um, we're going to be very aggressive again on our takeout specials. We'll be doing these, these great beer specials again, 1999 four packs. I think we're going to call it four pack and a roll. We get a roll of toilet paper with it. So um, I hear that the shelves in the uh, stores are getting low on toilet paper. Some of them are empty again. Somebody told me on Amazon the other day that the price like literally went up and almost doubled, unfortunately, and they weren't, really, weren't even able to get some stuff. I know for me that um, gloves, um, hey guys, what are you doing? Uh, the gloves, latex gloves are super hard for me to get, like really hard for me to get. So um, you know, a lot of the places don't even have it in stock and they went from literally from 30 bucks since this thing first started to now $120. So they've quadrupled in price latex gloves. And while there, we were giving them away for free. And we were still giving away free even when the price doubled. 
um, triple, they're kind of, kind of hard to announce quadruple. I can't even buy them, but we were giving away gloves for free um, in the beginning of the pandemic um, as a community service. We'll still give you uh, ionized water. If you want ionized water, we'll still give you ionized water. Come fill your jug up and take the ionized water home, and it's a high pH. It goes through a 0 0.01 micron biostone filter. Uh, the water's filtered and then goes through a chamber and separated the negative positive and gives it a zap and uh, raises the electrons. It's uh, high antioxidant water, basically. If you were to go buy it in a store, it's a couple bucks a gallon, three bucks a gallon or whatever it is uh, for anybody who has these machines to do that. We give away for free, so it's always going on in community service. We've done that for years, by the way. Uh, we've always offered people that have been in health crises like cancer and things like that that need to raise their pH. We've always offered it for free, and now we're offering it free to everybody because uh, we feel it's important that your immune system is being supported uh, in, a, in a very, very good way. And there's no better way than drinking lots of water and drinking high quality, high antioxidant water on top of it is the best way. One of the best ways to keep your immune system rocking and rolling. So we'll get it to you for free. Just bring in a jug and we'll keep filling it up. So no problem with that. If you sit at the, if you sit at the table and buy a bottle, I think it's $5. If you buy a bottle at the table, we'll totally give it to you as a community service to take home for free. All right, folks, that's it for now. Um, I got to uh, finish some work here, and uh, we'll hope to see everybody soon, and be safe.